This time the quick speed shop, I'm working on 40 Mercury, I'm working on a gas tank, I'm building a fuel filler neck, and I'm doing a couple other little things trying to get this fuel system ready to go, and it's all starting right now. I'm a professional, don't try this at home. Hey bam, so we're back at it here on the 40 Mercury. I'm working on a fuel system now. I've got the uh, Mustang tank set in the car. I want to figure out how to put the sending unit, or not the summary, sorry, not the sending unit, the uh, filler neck on it. And uh, I ordered one, we're gonna check that out. So let's take a look at the trunk right now. I got the tank in the car just sitting in there. If you haven't seen it before, this is a 65 to 67 Mustang uh, fuel tank. It is the actual trunk floor. That's how they made them in the Mustangs. This is a reproduction tank I bought at a swap meet. And originally here on this uh, outlet, there was a, an elbow and it went to the back sail panel on the Mustang. And that's where you put the fuel in. So I've got it here, but I need to have a filler neck in the trunk. So I got some options here. I ended up buying a, a, a bolt-on filler neck for uh, if you're like building your own tank. And if you had a flat tank, you it would use this gasket and you would bolt it down to this ring. But I'm going to cut this ring off because I've got some uh, fuel hose to connect these two together. This is two and a quarter inch, and this is also two and a quarter inch. So I'm going to essentially put the filler neck right like this in the trunk and use a piece of filler hose to hold it together. Pretty sure this is a vented a vented cap with this. Uh, valve in here by vented i mean to let air into the tank when you're when you're using it now this is the sending unit for the tank which mounts let's see like this in the front of the tank and you see it's three eighths line and it's only one line this is the original style mustang one uh the fuel gauge sending unit is bad it's broken on the inside so i'm going to order no one of these but i'm going to get one with a return line a uh, separate quarter inch return line because when i run the gas lines up to the front up here we got the three carburetors set up right now it's running an electric pump with a regulator and the fuel comes up here and then it goes in here but it deadheads against these carburetors and i want to run a, a fuel system with a return line to bleed off any extra pressure so right now it has an electric pump because this AC compressor is in the way. I'm going to remove the AC compressor for now and put a mechanical fuel pump back on this engine. And then I'm going to make some brackets and mount the AC uh, up over here somewhere eventually. But for now, I'm just going to remove it. I don't think it has any charge in it right now anyways. So I'm going to take it off. But I want to, I'm, a, I'm not a fan of electric pumps. They let you down. And a mechanical pump for a small block Chevy, you can always go get at any auto parts store. And... Uh, keep it cruising. So I'm going to run new fuel lines from the tank with a return line. Pretty sure this is a vented a vented cap with this uh, valve in here. By vented I mean to let air into the tank when you're when you're using it. Now this is the sending unit for the tank which mounts, let's see, like this in the front of the tank. And you see it's 3 eighths line and it's only one line. This is the original style Mustang one. Uh, the fuel gauge sending unit is bad it's broken on the inside so i'm going to order no one of these but i'm going to get one with a return line a uh, separate quarter inch return line because when i run the gas lines up to the front up here we got the three carburetors set up right now it's running an electric pump with a regulator and the fuel comes up here and then it goes in here but it deadheads against these carburetors and I want to run a, a fuel system with a return line to bleed off any extra pressure. So right now, it has an electric pump because this AC compressor is in the way. I'm going to remove the AC compressor for now and put a mechanical fuel pump back on this engine. And then I'm going to make some brackets and mount the AC uh, up over here somewhere eventually. But for now, I'm just going to remove it. I don't think it has any charge in it right now anyways. So I'm going to take it off. But I want to, I'm, a, I'm not a fan of electric pumps. They let you down. And a mechanical pump for a small block Chevy, you can always go get at any auto parts store. But I'm going to run a, the pressure line up from the pump. And then I've got a uh, an old uh, Mopar slash American Motors style filter that has a return line that takes any excess pressure that the pump makes when you shut the engine off. And it doesn't, you know, if this gets, these fuel lines get hot when you shut the engine off, it'll bleed pressure and can dump fuel into the carburetors so i get this fuel filter 
with a return line, they'll take any excess pressure and bleed it back to the tank. So that's why when I order the new sending unit, it will have a return line hookup and it'll allow the, the fuel, to, any extra fuel pressure to bleed off back into the tank here. So I've got, so I got the fuel system that'll circulate, that'll make, that'll make sense. But my big question is, is I don't want any uh, fuel fumes in the trunk. So I wanted to add a, th a third vent and vent, vent the tank up into the wheel wall on the outside of the car. So any vents, uh, any fuel vapors would end up outside the car, not in the trunk. And it would also allow air in and, and allow the tank to work correctly. This tank is used, but it hasn't had fuel in it for several years. A couple of years anyways. But it, sp it smells like a little varnishy smell. And I was going to weld a, a quarter inch nipple onto the side of the tank just underneath the floor to add, uh, add as a vent line. I'm just a little nervous weld on a tank. You definitely never, ever, ever want to put weld on a tank that had liquid gas in it recently because the thing could explode the vapors are trapped in there this tank has been dry for probably at least two years so even though it smells a little bit like old varnishy smell i'm almost confident there's not any actually fuel vapors left in there because it's been bone dry for you know like two years but i'm just a little leery of welding onto the side of the tank or sweating onto the side of the tank so if I could add a vent, I would probably add it to the filler neck. Here, you know, I, I could weld on this, weld a nipple on this, and bring a line and run it out to the tank, which I, I might do. But I can always add that later, take this off, and um, since it's held on only with a hose, and add that later. I really don't want to run a line inside the trunk that's in here if I don't have to. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to cut this off, get this flange off of here. I have some Gates uh, fuel holes, two and a quarter inch fuel rated hose to make the connection. Here you can see it goes right onto the tank there. And this is hose that's rated specifically for fuel filler neck action. So we can use that here. And it also will go on to here to make, make a nice connection. Then I use a couple of hose clamps to hold it together. So I'll be able to not modify that tank if I don't have to. You know, this is good stuff here. It's expensive. It's good stuff. So let me cut this off and then we'll we'll put out a tank and see how it works. I want to check and make sure this this cap is going to suck uh, uh, be able to allow pressure in. So we're going to do a science experiment. I hooked up the vacuum cleaner here and I should be able to draw vacuum on this and it should operate the valve in this cap at some point and I'll be able to see if it holds or not. So let me fire that up. Put the put it in here. I already can hear it's drawn. Now let's see. Let's see here. Man, it's drawing an awful lot of vacuum. That doesn't seem to be letting any vacuum go at all. This cap doesn't seem to be letting any vacuum go at all. I, I would think that this valve would do that, but I'm a little leery man, I'm a little leery that I do need to add the vent because that's there's no way that I mean, that's way more vacuum than you would have, I think, on the fuel system. And it wasn't operating this, if that's a valve, it wasn't operating it. So, I really don't want the tank to suck, you know, and create a negative pressure in the tank. Hmm. The instructions don't say if this is vented or not. It's like a cheap one. I know you can buy these bayonet style caps vented. I got one other cap. Let me go get that and we'll try that and see if it makes a difference. Okay, I went and I got a uh, cap off my Studebaker truck, which I'm... I know this is a vented cap in this one, even though it's it's used, it, it works good. Now I put it on here, it's the same style bayonet cap, it, it clamps down. But listen, when I blow in this hose, and then when I put the vacuum on it, this is working. Listen to this. You hear the air coming out of it? If I run the vacuum... Yeah, 
You can also hear it sucking, sucking now here. Now if I take this cap, you don't, you don't hear any sucking sound here. So this isn't really, this must be a non-vetted cap. And also when I blow on it, you don't hear any, no air comes out. So I'm gonna say that this vent, it, if this is a vent and it's not working, or this is a non-vented cap, where this one appears to vent both ways, allow air in and allow air out, which you think would be the case with a vented cap, it would allow the, the air pressure in the fuel tank to modulate with atmospheric pressure to maintain this, the, the correct thing here. And this gas gets on here good. I don't, I think this seals up good. I just think this is vented and this one is either, either not or, or not working at all. So that makes me want to take and put a vent in this fuel neck and vent it to the outside of the car. So I know I have a correctly vented tank, but I'm not going to get fuel. So yet if I put this cap on the car, I don't like that if the if it says it's a hot summer day out and I build up pressure in the fuel tank, I don't want it venting the fuel vapors out of the cap into the trunk of the car. Or I want a non-vented cap with a separate vent line that I can modulate the air pressure, the tank pressure to outside atmosphere, not in the trunk of the car. So we're not going to use this vented cap that's off my truck. I'm going to use the cap that came with this that appears to be non-vented and I'm going to add that vent to this filler neck and run it out of the trunk of the car to vent to the atmosphere. Okay, so I, f I figured out what I want to do here. We'll set the fuel neck on here. And then the hose will connect. So I took a piece of quarter inch brake line and I bent up this little fitting. And I'm going to drill a hole in the filler neck up top here. I'm going to stick this line through. I'm going to put the fitting, the uh, 45 on the inside, and stick it through so it's got a little bit of more meat to weld on. So if it burns through, it'll meld into that. But I'm going to put this little nipple on here, that's what she said, coming out, of, coming out of the filler neck. And then right here, going down here, I'm going to drill a hole in this access panel and there'll be a quarter inch fuel hose will come up through and it'll just slide onto this. This will be the vent and then the line will run along underneath the car and up into the wheel well to vent the tank. And that'll be perfect. It'll be out of the way, it'll be small, but it will allow this tank to vent correctly and to modulate its pressure and then also since this cap is sealed up to the trunk area it will prevent any fuel vapors from going into the trunk and leaking into the car and making it smell like gas. Okay I drilled my hole and look here I've got the the line very carefully in there so you can see when it is in there that uh, 45 degree fitting fits nice and flush to the inside of the filler neck and it'll give a little extra meat for welding so I will hold this here and this is where like a TIG welder would be nice because you could get in there and just a little bit. But I'll use the MIG welder on a really low setting because this brake line is real um, susceptible to burning through. But I will um, I'll go ahead and I'll just weld this real carefully on here. And then it'll be good to go and we'll be able to mount this filler neck right up on the tank with this filler hose here. Okay, so the welding didn't work. Apparently, this piece of brake line is the copper infused stuff, and not the not the shiny copper stuff, but it's not it's got it's not just plain steel brake line, so I can't weld it. So I'm going to try to sweat this on here. Um, I'm going to try this out. See if it works. Ah. Can't turn this on. Let's try this. Got a burns matic I got some solder. I put some flux on here already. I'm just gonna try it out and see if I can get it to do it.
This might be working. I think that worked. What do you think? Wait till it cools down, but I think I, uh, I think I got her to go. I'm glad I left the uh, 45 degree fitting on the inside, so that helped pull some solder around in there. But I think that got it. All right, well that worked out good here. I cut the fuel hose. I got it banded on here to uh, hose clamps, nice and solid. Got the your fill cap here you got the vent so this ought to work nice i mean this is going to be hidden in the trunk this isn't like a show car if i was doing a show car they'd probably have some kind of floor or, or remount this this is just um this car is just going to be down and dirty driver so this is this is fine for what i'm doing in here um if you're building like a full-on show car with a fully uh you know but it's going to work out good enough for what I'm doing. So I'll just drill a hole in the, the excess panel here, this little removable panel. I'll drill a hole here. I'll bring some quarter-inch rubber fuel hose up on there. Then I'll just run along up into the wheel well on the outside of the wheel well and leave it hang with a vent. And then it'll vent to the outside of the car. And the trunk will be nice and vapor-free. And, man, that's that's good to go. So pretty much the fuel tank, all i got to do is i got to scuff this up. I'm going to herculine the top of the tank. Um, get this coating off here that somebody didn't scuff it right in the first place. So I'll clean all this up. A Herculine on the top of the tank. I need to order that fuel filler, uh, not fuel, the sending unit. I need to order a new sending unit with a return line. And then I'm going to run some new fuel lines up to the front of the car here. Well, to finish out the video, I'm going to show you what I'm, I am going to remove the air conditioning uh, compressor temporarily up here. And I'm going to pull the condenser out just so I can take the lines off back to, all the way back to the block here. Um. Like I said, I'm going to put a mechanical fuel pump back on here, and this bracket, bracketry mounts right to the mechanical fuel pump boss. So eventually the compressor will be mounted over here somewhere. But for now, the, there wasn't any charge, and I hit the, the Schrader valve, and it had like half a pound if or less in pressure in it. So the system's got a leak somewhere. So it wasn't the AC wasn't going to work anyways without fixing the leak. So I'm just going to take it out for now and uh, eventually put it back on the car. All right, bam, there we go, removed. Got the fuel pump uh, boss hole here. I got the plate that goes on it to put the mechanical pump on. Here is a mechanical pump over here. They're like 25 bucks at any auto parts store, so I will have no problem on the road repairs. It's gonna go down here. The only thing, the fitting's gonna be kind of close to the radiator hose, if you can see down there. I'll make it work here somehow. Let me put a little guard on the hose. But the mechanical pump will go right in there, and then I'll feed some new lines to it from the tank, and I'll have mechanical small block Chevy fuel pump action. To make it work on a three-deuce setup, I'm gonna take this AN line loose. I'll get rid of this aluminum fuel line that goes down here, that goes back to the original, the fuel cell. I'll turn this fuel log around so it's sticking out the front, the, uh, the AN fitting, and I can use the 3 8 line I have to make a new 3 8 line. It'll come across here. There's going to be a fuel filter out here with a return line to bleed off any excess pressure. And that will run back to the tank as well. And then it'll mount here and we'll have simple mechanical action that should be trouble free and worry free and be able to cruise this thing down the road. Bam. So let's go to the end of the video and we'll do the outro. I really want to get this car done soon. I know you guys also want to see it on the road. I'm getting anxious to drive it, and but there's still some big things going on. Then I'm like one and a half steps away from getting this thing ready to go. I need to build a battery mount in the front or on new battery cables, and then bleed the brakes, and it should be able to fire up then and, and drive. Um, even though the clutch, uh, if you don't know, the clutch has an issue. I need to take the transmission out, but I need to get the car down on its wheels and turn it around first. So... We're real close to getting this thing fired up. We'll be finishing up the 40 Mercury here shortly and then getting on to some new projects. So it's always something to look forward to at the Quick Speed Shop.